Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm participating in a DIY challenge. It's the sweet but twisted open invite hosted by Connie over at Connie's Creative Creations and Zaina at OK at Home DIY. DIY number one. Christmas tree candy cane. So I had a couple of Christmas trees left over from Halloween at Dollar Tree. They had these Halloween Christmas trees and I thought they were really cute. So I thought it would make a really nice candy cane. So all I had to do was shape it into a candy cane shape. And I was doing this on a live and I had an audience and someone in the audience Fabby from Arrows DIY suggested that I use a white Christmas tree to make a, a ring around the candy cane shape. So that's what I did. So I just took the white Christmas tree and I cut off some branches and I just twisted them around the candy cane shape because most candy canes have like stripes and I wanted this to represent a candy cane. Did you know most people believe the form and shape of candy canes have a religious meaning? It's also believed that the red stripes represent the blood of Jesus while the white stripes represent the purity of Jesus. I really liked how this candy cane was shaping out and also the tree has a base that comes with it already so it was great for holding it up. I thought it needed a little something at the bottom and I had this tool that I'd gotten from Dollar Tree that had faux snow on it so I just wrapped the tool around the base for a bottom. Once that was done, I added fairy lights and my candy cane was complete. Wait to the end for the final reveal. DIY number two, pine cone candy cane. Yes, I said pine cone. So I had this idea to make a pine cone candy cane because if you've seen in previous videos, I've done a pine cone Christmas tree and a pine cone pumpkin and I really like how they turned out. So I decided I was going to somehow glue pine cones to something in a candy cane shape. But my friend Billy Burt from the Messy Studio suggested that I take some pine cones and glue them one on top of each other and make a candy cane shape like that. So that's what I did. So originally I did that and then I started gluing little pieces of pine cone onto that. I was having a hard time though getting it to stand up straight, especially at the top where the candy cane loops around because I had a pine cone there and it kind of reminded me of a baby bird, like a baby eagle. So someone from the live chat audience, Larry Aldridge, suggested that I use a wire hanger. So I found a wire hanger and I unraveled it and then I cut it so that I could use the hanging part and part of the long piece. And I stuck that in the crook of the pine cone piece so it would hold everything up and that worked really good. And then I was able to just glue on the little pine cone pieces to cover it. And I ended up covering it quite a bit because I wanted it thick, thick enough to stand up. I ended up getting this red garland that I saw at Dollarama and I used tumbling tower blocks and cut them up 
for a base that I saw from Nancy, Little Treasures by Nancy did. And so I was inspired by that. And here's how the candy cane look. DIY number three, topiary candy cane. So I had bought these lights. They were like a string light with balls on the end of it at Dollarama uh, a while ago. And I thought, hey, I can make an easy candy cane with this. So what I did was using hot glue, I glued each ball to each other, carefully making sure not to glue the wire for the string lights. And the reason why that I'm wearing a costume here is because this was during the week of Halloween and I did it on a live. Now I just glued each piece and you should hold each piece at a time, but I'm pretty impatient and I let go and of course the piece came off, but I continued on gluing and then someone suggested that I put the piece down, laying flat down and then the pieces wouldn't come off. So that's what I did. Did you know the candy cane's hardness was to be a homage to the solid rock, the foundation of the church, and to symbolize the firmness of God's promise of eternal life to us? The candy maker then bent the straight stick into a hook to form a J that would represent the first letter of Jesus' name, also realizing that it looked like a shepherd's staff which would serve as a reminder that the Lord is the Good Shepherd. After the candy maker went public with the candy, it is believed that they became quite popular with churches and were often given to children that behaved during the services. Once my candy cane was put together, I decided to glue some flowers and also these white berries that I had gotten from Dollarama on it. And I thought it looked really good. Then I had this little pine cone vase that I had previously made and I stuck it inside. There was a little red bow on the vase that I removed. And I had these little lay flowers in purple. I decided to make a little bow with that so it would match. So that's what I did and I added it on. Here's how it turned out and I thought it turned out amazing. I want to thank Connie and Zaina for hosting this awesome collaboration. Make sure you check out their channels in the description box below. Also check out the playlist for all of the wonderful creators. And I'll see you on the next one. Dream, smile, and laugh out loud. Take care, everybody. Bye.